Cheerling my heart! To take in the topsail! Ocean! Dear master, what cheer? Good speak to the mariners! Fall to a yarl and run ourselves aground! Be stir, be stir! Hi! My heart! Cheerly, cheerly my heart! Yar, yar! Hi, sir! Take in the topsail! Send to the master's whistle! Woe to thy burst thy wind if room enough! <laughs> I pray now, keep below. You mar our labor. Keep your cabins. You do assist the storm. Nay, good, be patient. When the sea is, hence the cabin. Silence. Trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast to board. None that I more love than myself. Dearly, my heart. Out of our way, I say. Oh, I have good comfort from this fellow. Methinks he hath no drowning marks upon him. <laughs> the top mast, yard, lower, lower, center and try with main course. Yes, again, what do you hear? Pass me up the rope, you falling, blasphemous, incharitable dog. Weren't you then? Uh, we are not afraid to be drowned, no matter what. Lay her off, center two blocks off the sea. Lay her off, lay her off. Come on. begun to tell me what I am, but stopped, concluding with stay not yet. The hours now come. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? Oh, I do not think thou canst, for thou was not out three years old. Certainly, ma'am, I can. Tis far off and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst and more, Miranda. Twelve years since, Miranda. Twelve years since. Thy mother was the ruler of Milan. Are you not my mother? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she was ruler of Milan. And thou her only heir. Oh, the heavens, please you further. Now, my sister and thy auntie, Antonia, pray thee, mark me that a sister should be so perfidious. The government I cast upon her did awaken evil nature, and she believed she was indeed Milan's rightful ruler. Dost thou hear? Your tale, ma'am, would cure deafness. Now the queen, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my sister's suit to presently extirpate me and mine out of the confer fair and dukedom of Milan with all the honors on my sister. Alack, for pity. Here a little further, then I shall bring thee to the present business, which now's upon 
without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Dear, they durst not. They hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, and prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged nor tackle, sail nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. How came we ashore? By providence divine, some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan Gonzalo, then being appointed master of this design, did give us with rich garments, linens, stuffs, and necessaries that have since steaded much. Would I might but ever see that man. And. Pray you, mother, for still tis beating in my mind, your reason for raising the sea storm. No thus far for. By accident, most strange, bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. I have another question. Help me with my magic garment. But mother, I hear cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness, and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant. Come. I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel. Come. All hail, great mistress. Great madam, hail. I, I hope to answer thy best pleasure. Be to fly. To swim. Performed to point the tempest that I bade thee. To every article. I boarded the queen's ship. Now on the beach, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin. I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'll divide and burn in many places. The topmast, the yards, the bowsprit, what I flame distinctly that meets and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight on running were not. The fire and cracks of circulus roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread tried to shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All the mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all afire with me, the queen's son Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leapt and cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here! <laughs> But was this not nigh shore? Close, Close by, my mistress. mistress. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished on their sustaining garments, not a blemish. But fresher than before, and as thou badest me in troops, I have dispersed them about the isle. The queen's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs, in an odd angle of the isle, sitting, his arms in this sad knot. And the queen's ship. Safely in the harbor is the queen's ship. In the deep nook there she's hid. The mariners all under hatches stowed, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I disperse, they have all met again and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing they'd seen the queen's ship wrecked and her great person perished. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. Is, is there, there more toil? toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which has not yet performed me. How now, moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty. 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 Hast thou forgot from what a torment I did free thee? I do, I do not, ma'am. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, no, no ma'am. Ma thou hast! Where was she born? Speak! Tell me! Ma'am, in Archer! Ho! Was she so? I must once in a month recount where thou hast been, which thou forgetst. This foul witch Sycorax was banished! Is not this true? Aye, ma'am! 
This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Though my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant, and was a spirit too delicate to act out her earthy and abhorred commands. Refusing her grand hest, she did confine thee to a cloven pine. Imprisoned, it did painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled whelp had bore, not honored with a human shape. Yes, yes Caliban, her son. Dull thing I say so, he, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. Thou best know from what a torment I did free thee, when I heard thee and made get the pine and let thee out. I, I thank, thank thee, mistress. mistress. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee with naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, mistress. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and after two days, I will discharge thee. That's my noble mistress. What shall we do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take this shape, and hither come in it. Go hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on, who is a Caliban, my slave? Tis a villain, man, I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make in our wood, make, fetch in our wood, make in our fire, and serves us in offices that profit us. What ho, slave, Caliban, thou art thou. Speak. There's more enough with thee. Come forth, I say, there is other business for thee. Come forth. As wicked do as e'er my mother brushed with the raven's feather from an wholesome fen. Drop on ye both, a southwest blow on ye, and blister you all over. For this be sure, tonight shall have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up, urchins for the vast of night that they may work all exercises on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than the bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. Oh, curse Prospera. Oh, this island's mine. My sigrax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, th thou strokest me and, and, and madest much of me. Oh, wouldst give me water with berries in it and, and, and teach me how to name the bigger light. And how the lust that burned by day and night. And I loved thee, and I showed thee all the qualities of the island. Oh, cursed be I that did so. Thou most lying slave, I have used thee, built as thou art with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, 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 would it had been done, thou didst prevent me. I had peopled else this isle with Caliban. Lord slave, which any prince of goodness will not take, being capable of all ill, I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other. When thou didst not speak, but would gabble like a thing most brutish, I endow thy purposes with words that made them know. You taught me language, and thy prophet on tis. I know how to curse thee. Thee, hen. I'll rack thee with old cramps, make thee roar, the beasts shall tremble at thy day. No, pray thee. I must obey her, her art is of such power. So, slave. Hey! Miranda! <laughs> Come on to these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have and kissed, the wild waves whist, put it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden there. 
Hark, hark, the watchdogs bark. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting Chanticleer cry, copy diddle down. Where should this music be? In the air of the earth? It sounds no more. And sure it waits upon some god of the island, weeping again the queen, my mother's wreck. This music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. And thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. Full fathom by thy mother lies, of her bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were her eyes, nothing of her that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Sea nymphs hourly ring her knell. Hark! Now I hear them. Ding dong bell. The titty does remember my drowned mother. This is no mortal business, nor no sound the earth owes. But I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eyes advance and say what thou seest yon. What is it? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about. Believe me, ma'am, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. No wench. It eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck. Although he is stained with grief, that's beauty's canker. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit fine, spirit, I'll set thee free within two days for this. Hmm? Uh, ah! uh! I'm most sure the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island. My prime request which I do last pronounce to you is, oh, you wonder, if you be made or no? No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, my heavens, I am the best that speak this speech were I but where tis spoken. How now, the best? What wert thou at the queen of Naples heard thee? A single thing as I am now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. Oh, she does hear me, and that she does, I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the queen, my mother, wrecked. Alack, for mercy. Yes, faith and all her lords. The queen of Naples and her more braver daughter could control thee, have now proved fit to do it. First sight they have changed eyes. Fine spirit, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word? Why speaks my mother so ungently? This is the second man that I ever saw, the first that I ever sighed for. Pity move my mother to be inclined to my way. Oh, if your affection's not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. They are both in each other's powers. Of this swift business I must uneasy make. Less to like winning. Make the prize light. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me, and dost usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this isle as a spy to win it from me, the ruler on it. No. As I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, how manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels. Follow. No, I will resist such entertainment until mine enemy has more power. <laughs> oh, dear mother, make not too rash a trial of him. Put thy sword up, traitor, who makest a show but darest not strike. Come for thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick, and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, mother. Hence! Hang not on my garments. Mother! Silence! One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. Mother! What? An advocate for an imposter! Mother! Hush! Thou thinkest there's no other such shapes having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish wench, 
to most of men. This is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. <laughs> Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirit says in a dream we're all bound up. My mother's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this woman's threats to whom I am subdued are but light to me. Might I but through my prison but once a day behold this maid. Oh, space enough have I in such a prison. It works! Fine spirit, thou hast done well. Hark what thou else shall do me. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then do exactly all points of my command. To the syllable. Be of comfort. My mother's of a better nature, sir, than she appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from her. Come on, speak not you for him. Come, go. Oh, wait. Let's make our rest here. Beseech you, ma'am, be merry, for you have cause. So have we all of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss. Good madam, weigh our sorrow with our comfort. Prithee, peace. She receives comfort like cold porridge. <gasps> Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. <laughs> Though this island seemed to be desert, uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yes. Yet <laughs> the air breathes upon us most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Or as if it were perfumed by a thin. Oh, here is everything advantageous to life. True. Save means to live. Of uh, that, not a little. <laughs> how lush and lusty the grass looks, how green. The ground indeed is tawny. Who then I have thought oh, green in it? <gasps> he misses not much. <laughs> no, he doesn't mistake the truth totally. <laughs> but the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments, being as they were, trenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. Methinks our garments are as fresh as when we put them on first. Is not, ma'am, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? Oh, you cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. My son is lost. O oh, thou, mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal upon thee? Ma'am, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water and breasted the surge most slow one that met him. I not doubt that he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Is foul weather in us all, good madam, when you are cloudy. The foul weather? Very foul! <laughs> Had I plantation of this idol, my He'd lady. He'd sell it with nettle seed. For gods or mallows. <laughs> and were king on it, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate. Letters should not be known. Riches, poverty, none. Contract, secession, born, bound of land, till vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, wine, or oil. No occupation. All men idle, all. And women, too, but innocent and pure. 
No sovereignty would I. Yet he would be king on it. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should provide without sweat or endeavor, but nature should bring forth of its own kind all poison, all abundance to feed my innocent people. I would with such perfection govern, ma'am, as to excel the golden age. Oh, God <laughs> save his majesty! Long live Gonzalo! Worthy! <laughs> no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness and did it on occasion to minister to these two who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. Was you we laughed at. <laughs> who in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you, so you may continue and laugh at nothing still? <laughs> Will you have me to sleep? I'm very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. <laughs> what? All so soon asleep? I wish mine eyes would, with themselves, shut up my thoughts. Please you, madam. You gotta met the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, when it doth, it is a comforter. We two, highness, will watch your person as you take your rest, and guard your safety. Thank you. <sighs> Wondrous heavy. possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. What might, noble Sebastian? Oh, what might? Methinks I see it in thy face. What thou shouldest be the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon my head. What art thou waking? Did you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speakest out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? Noble Sebastian, thou lettest thy fortune sleep. Die, rather, we kissed while thou art waking. Prithee, say on. Although this lord of weak remembrance, who shall be of little memory when he is earthed, hath here almost persuade the queen, her son's alive, that he is undrowned. Well, I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Say this were death that now hath seized them. Why, they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as she that sleeps. Lords that can prate as amply and unnecessarily as this Gonzalo. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement? Do you understand me? Methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your sister Prospera. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me, much fitter than before. Then, <laughs> my sister's servants were my companions. And now, they're my fleet. But for your conscience. <laughs> I and where lies that? Here lies your sister, no better than the earth that she lies upon. If she were that which now she's like, that's dead. Whom I, with this obedient seal, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever. 
As for the rest, they'll take suggestion like a cat lacks milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou got to Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword, one stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest. And I, the queen, shall love thee. Draw together. And when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall it on Gonzalo? My mistress through her perceives the danger that you her friend are in. and sends me forth. Awake, awake, awake. awake. Then let us both be sudden. Ah! Oh! Why, how now? Oh, awake? Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing, <gasps> like bulls. <gasps> I heard nothing. Oh, it was a dig to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. <gasps> heard you, Mr. Gonzalo. Upon mine honor, madam, I did hear a humming. There was a noise. Tis best that we stand upon our guard, or that we leave this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground. Let us make further search for my poor son. Oh, heavens keep him from these feet. Lean away. <laughs> Prospera, my lady, shall know what I have done. So, queen, go safely on to seek thy son. Oh, curse Prospera. that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, unprosper fall and make her by inchimil a disease. Oh, her spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. Oh, for every trifle are they set upon me, sometimes like apes that mow and chatter at me and after bite me. And like hedgehogs, which lie tumbling at my barefoot way, and, and mount their pricks at my footfall. Oh, sometime am I all wound with adders, who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. No! <laughs> oh, now, no, here comes a spirit of hers, and it torments me for bringing wood into slowly. I'll fall flat, perchance he will not mind me. Down! There's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. And another storm's brewing, but he'll sing in the wind. Oh, no, same black cloud. Got you, one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, then I know not what oh, what? what? What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? Oh. Whoa! A fish. Who smells like a fish? Oh. Very ancient and fish like smell. Uh -huh. A strange fish. Were I in England now, as once I was and had, but this fish painted that a holiday full there, but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man, but okay. let's see who can. Leg like a man. Bits like arms. What? Oh no. Or on my trough. I do now let to loose my opinion. Hold it no longer. This is 
no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered from a thunderbolt. <laughs> the storm has come again. Okay. Uh, oh, my best way is to creep under his gabardine. There's no other shelter hereabouts. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. Yeah, well, here shroud to the dregs of the storm be passed. Okay. No! Why should a lord of sea to sea is till I die ashore? Oh, oh, this is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. But here is my comfort. <laughs> the master, the swabber, the boatswain, and I, the cutter and his mate, looked more Megan, Mary to Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate, for she had a tongue with a tang, who would cry to a sailor, go hang, for she loved not the savior of tar nor of pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where she did itch, let the sea boys and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too. But here is my comfort. Do not torment me, oh! What is the matter? Have we devils here? Oh, my God! This is some monster of the isle with four legs. With God as I take it. Uh, and you, where the devil should he learn our language? I shall give him some relief if it be, but for that, if I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on its leather. Oh, do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my one <laughs> home faster. <laughs> he's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. If you have never drunk wine, a fool will go to remove his fit. Thou dost me yet but little hurt. Thou wilt to none. I know it by thy trembling. <laughs> oh, come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cat. Open your mouth. You ought to know that voice it should be. Oh, but he is drowned. And he goes down loud and happy. <laughs> Four legs. And two voices. <laughs> a most delicate monster. If all the wine in my bottle shall recover him, I will help his cue. Come. <laughs> Amen. I will pour some in thy other mouth. Sabato! Oh! Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is a devil and no monster. I shall leave him. Oh, Sabato! If thou be Sabato, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Be not afeard, thy good friend Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I will pull thee by the lesser legs. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. Oh, oh. oh. very Trinculo indeed. Ah. How canst thou be the siege of this moon calf? Can he bend Trinculo's? Uh, what? I, I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke. But no, art thou not oh. drowned, Stefano? I am now thou art not drowned. Oh, this is too <laughs> overwhelmed. But I hid me under the dead moon cast gabardine for fear of the storm, but no, art thou not living, oh, Stefano? Oh, oh, I pray thee, do not turn me about. Oh. My stomach is not constant. These fine things, and, and if they're not sprites, that's a brave god, and, and bear ce celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How didn't thou escape? How came hither? I swear by this bottle how thou came hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved overboard. I swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here, yeah. swear then how thou escapest. So I'm a sure man like a duck. I can swim like a duck. I'll be sworn. Oh, here. Oh, 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 oh. The book. 
Now the cat's from like a duck. Now it made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, have maybe more of this. Oh, 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 fun man. My cellar is in a rough by the seaside where my wine is in. How now, moon calf, how does thine of you? As thou dropped from heaven. <laughs> Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. I have seen me in her, and I do adore thee. My, my mistress showed me thee, and thy dog, and thy bush. Come, swear to that. Here. Kiss the book. I will furnish it a nun with new contents. <laughs> oh, by this good light, this be a very shallow monster. Well, I have feared of him. A most weak monster. Oh, the man in the moon. <laughs> a most poor, credulous monster. Oh, well, well drawn monster. I'm <laughs> good, sir. <laughs> I, I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and 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 I'll kiss thy foot. I prithee, be my god. Why, that's good life. Just be a most perfidious and drunken monster. I, I'll kiss thy foot. I, I, I swear myself thy subject. Come on, then, down and swear. <laughs> <laughs> I can laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster. Oh, a most scurvy monster. Oh, I can find it in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. kiss. I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries, and I'll fish for thee, and get thee wood enough. Oh, a plague upon that tyrant that I serve. I will bear her no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. <laughs> a most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I pray thee, <laughs> let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I, with my long nails, will dig thee pig nuts, and show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. Oh, oh. Wilt thou go with me? I pretty now lead the way without any more talking. Nor wash dish, ban, ban, cacala, ban. Has a new master, get a new man. Freedom, hey, freedom, hey, freedom, hey, freedom. 